Welcome back, noble heroes. Welcome back to another session of Mythia. Of course, we begin with laughter as always, and we are going to go ahead and get back into the session here in just a moment. But first, I would like to go ahead and ask you if you're enjoying our content to give us a like and a subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, it really helps out the channel, helps us grow, and uh, ask you to definitely do try this at home. I'm going to go ahead and begin with a uh, outside view, as most of the time I do. Um, so, we begin with this. The sky was angry and spitting down on Ace, who pulled his thick cloak more tightly around his shoulders. He glanced in the bright window he was leaning next to, checking if everything was going well. He secretly hoped it didn't. The raging winds made it impossible to make out a minor din inside the tavern, but he saw Zio was playing the charmer as usual. He tried to read Eric's features, but between the fog on the window and the drops that slid down its surface, he couldn't tell. Hurry up and fail, he whispered to himself as he watched the barkeeper, the barkeep deliver the fourth round of drinks. Zio wore a parapet of poison resistance around his neck which was making him hold his liquor better than the tiefling actually could. For not the first time that night, Ace wished Danworth had gone with his plan to use some sort of illusion of Eric's dead wife to convince him to join them, but they never went with his plans. Too extreme was always the line. He was here to unleash a little. He was tired of holding back. A smile came to him when he thought about his fight with Roland back in Janjasi's cave. He had felt alive. His smile widened as he daydreamed about slowly beating the paladin to death, then stabbing him with his own sword. He knew it was sick, but that just made him smile harder. Then he thought about Roland doing that to him. The super soldier could punch into his head through his eye if he were a little stronger. His smile became something longing. He stared at the empty night, lusting after his own brutal death. He saw his skull shatter, his brains fall in a sickly pile on the stone. It had to be tactile, he thought. Something physical. His dreams snapped when he heard Eric yelling as Eric stood. Gate time, he thought. He pulled down his leather mask. Ace jumped through the window, drawing Face Smasher. He landed with a loud thump on the wood as the few patrons started. He stood, smiling. What are you doing, Ace? Zio yelled at him. He was on the line. Shit. He looked around and saw Eric's face recognize him. His half-drunk features frowned menacingly as he summoned the armor of the Stone Wolf. Ace just shrugged. Screw it. Too late now. He rushed forward as the earth exploded beneath his feet. Huge slabs of rock crushed Ace between them, trapping him as Eric controlled the very world with his hands. An armor of stone had formed a wolf's head over his face as he raised his hands with them, and with them the stones holding Ace pinned. The older human wobbled on his feet as he fought to push past the ale. Zio growled in frustration, then lunged to stab the stone wolf through one of the eye holes in, the hel in his wolf helm with his dagger. The world's most powerful druid staggered as Ace was released. Both men were impressed when Eric pulled the knife from his head, but Ace wasn't about to let him get another chance. He ran forward, shattering Eric's arm with a spiked bat. As he cried out in pain, the villagers around them fished for whatever weapons they could. Zio split into several clones and finished them silently all except for the barkeep, who was in the back, and a young dwarf girl in the corner who trembled in fear. Eric raised his hand, and Ace watched the gro ground outside begin to shiver. He grabbed the palm and twisted it backwards with a snap. Eric howled. He was lost in the rage now. He felt alive, but only for a moment. He headbutted his face, shattering the helm and his skull until the mighty stone wolf was just a broken mess on the floor. Your brain must be as dense as your head, 
Zio said near him as he stood. I was winning him over! Ace whirled on Zio and grabbed him by the horn and wrenched him into the air. You think to chatter your teeth to Damless about this, and I will spread your skull over miles. He was belligerent and unwilling, Ace said. Zio saw the madness in his eyes. He was belligerent, unwilling, Zio repeated. Ace cast him down to the floor, his breathing heavy. He drew in a deep breath, trying to calm down. Then his eyes caught on the dwarf girl in the corner, trying to slide into a shadow. He looked over her for a moment. Hey, he said towards her. Whoa, 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 I'm not going to hurt you. He approached. You're pretty young for a tavern. He looked over the dead patrons. And the only other dwarf here is the barkeep. Is the barkeep your dad, dear? The fear that filled her huge eyes told him the answer. Look, I don't want to have to go into the back and find your dad. After all, someone has to clean up here, right? <laughs> you love your dad, don't you? You don't want me to find him, right? I didn't think so. They left. Zio with wounded pride and empty hands, but Ace... He had a new recruit. Her name was Cayenne Sordal. He was such a gross individual. Don't like that guy. Don't like that guy at all. We will begin a bit back in time, in fact, in the Adamantine Fortress. Estrid has revealed about the request from the designer to wear their clothing, and you all have had your note to delivered and uh, had your time upon the upper tower. And Roland, you've had both Isaac and Zarathan visit you in varying, uh, encouraging talks. But even as that occurred, Zarafan and Jennifer were together in a private chamber provided by the queen. I say we pull the trigger, bring them all in here and tell them. I think that would be wise. I would have preferred to have done this on the ship, but um, the fiasco with the whale and all. He says, what do you think about that? Island. And Isaac's, excuse me, Euphemia's unusual amount of sea knowledge. I'm not sure it would be unusual. Well, she spent know most that. of her life on it. I'm not a sailor. I've sailed around a little bit. Well, I'm not. Not on boats. <laughs> Does it count if you're flying? Is that sailing? No. Sailing's explicitly for water. I think more soaring would be the appropriate terminology. What about the Aldenauts with their flying ship? Do they count as sailors? They were piratey. Mm, only if their crafts are considered ships. He nods. Either way, we wouldn't want to approach the island by flight with those whales. Yes, I imagine that would be unpleasant. I've never heard the term whale cause a shiver to go my spine before. He looks like he's PTSD about those whale dragonflies. <laughs> she kind of looks at him, corks her head, smiles, and shakes her head as well. So, you ready for this party tonight? Yes, I should probably refresh my anti-image collection on myself. I don't know why you don't just change your form. It seems a lot easier. Because memories shift and change most people's. But yeah. I do need to be recognized right now. But it's not forever. Sometimes I don't know how you keep up with all of the guises. If I had more than four, I think I would go... 
I think I would fail to keep the appropriate width. It's not that difficult. But again, I suppose if you're in the world as much as you are, you're going to need more than four. Indeed. Speaking of which, what is all of your schoolwork going to? Are they just sending it to somebody else right now? Are you delegating? I always delegate. Who are your delegates? Is that the word? Delegates? <laughs> she would know the correct word for that. Sarah does not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> You, you inform him of the correct word, which is not delegates. There's no way it's delegates. Um, what about delegates? Delegates? That's wrong. That still right? sounds weird. That's wrong. The but I don't know. The de delegated? Yeah. Those to whom I delegate. There you go. <laughs> anyway, um, she goes, I have quite a few. She looks like she doesn't particularly want to go off on that tangent. It'll take a while. I'll send for a second. He looks up for a moment. And you almost think he's going to continue to say something. She'll pause. No. He smiles. How are you feeling? Inside. Yep. I had a sheet at one point in this game. <laughs> there it is. Oh god, I can't see anything. I'm so blind right now. Okay. Desperately need new glasses. Yes, but it hasn't happened yet. So twenty. There is a hint of pain in his eyes. He will notice a tightness in June's own as she observes him, but she will respect him and not say anything at the moment. She will step to the door, open it, and flag down a passing servant. Each one of you, only about ten minutes later, are going to have a servant approach you, and each one of you in turn will have them tell you that the godmother Jennifer is requesting your presence in conference meeting room four. Is there anybody who does not go? And is there anybody that you do not ask? Mm, I was including just the group for this, not like crew or Extra meeks. So the extra meeks are definitely not in the Adamantine Fortress. They went home. <laughs> They're not going to the party? They will be. Uh, I don't know with they... Hero's Imitation, but they'll probably be like carted there. Gotcha. From their houses. Are they going to be on the ship with us for the rest of the game? Uh, that was most certainly not my intention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although, clearly somebody wants them to come. I think they're good. <laughs> I like Meeks. See how many Meeks we can collect. Yes! A gaggle of Meeks. Oh. The big one was uh, helpful. They make a good And Luke is good. Yeah. Alright. Um, the servant will also deliver a small note. Uh, and you see that it has the seal of Bridgewalk upon it to you, Femina. Um, as you crack the note open, it will uh, ask what you want done with the pirate prisoners on the Outrunner. Did you send anyone to deal with them, like Johnny had to get them out? I would assume... She would have sent Johnny, a Dom, someone to go down there, collect them, and probably bring them. Is there a place where they keep prisoners? There are cliffside the jail. Did we all leave the ship before, or what? I was not here, so I. I know. Um, <laughs> I was so discombobulated with you gone. I'm sorry. You, you could have <laughs> had the Drake guard take care of them when you got off the ship. That would have been like. ideal. Are they in prison? Uh, Bridgewalk prison then, or are they being held somewhere not in prison? They should go to Bridgewalk prison for now. That's where they committed their deeds. They should be kept there. Okay. 
there is a series of cells along the, not like the inner part of the canyon, but outside uh, facing the waves that come in from the ocean. Um, and there are these outcroppings of rock with a uh, hole cut in the ceiling, but the rock is too smooth to climb, and they drop prisoners inside that hole, and they're like inside a circular jail cell. Okay. She would write a brief message back to the queen, uh, saying that she would like to discuss with her crew and would have um, her suggestions for the queen that night. You scratch a quick note. What is Euphemia's demeanor? Empty. All right. Uh, you hand it to the servant and they move off. You all arrive at conference room four and find a humanoid Zarafen and Juniper as you open the door. Uh, Zarafen is standing, Juniper. June is sipping a cup of tea that looks to be piping hot and delightful. Sarafen is in the uh, process of sort of reaching his cup out to ask for some tea. And June will gesture and it pours itself. Um, as you all walk in, uh, do you all also make yourselves comfortable? Well, we'll sit down. And is this just the questers? Yes. Uh, Hero will arrive third, and as he comes in, he's going to sort of like get behind a chair, grab it by both legs, like pull it backwards, and then like go and leap up into it. Um, he sort of has gotten pretty good at the, like, leaping and then struggling into the bottom of the seat and then <laughs> standing to the tabletop. Are there no shorter chairs? Like so the happy? table's too tall is the problem. If you were in a short chair, you'd just be looking under the table. Um, I'm just going to head of... <laughs> But Euphemia is significantly more agile uh, and could probably just like grab and like heft lift onto a chair. Euphemia does, but she lands heavier than usual. Like, not quite as agile as normal. Is that something that a passive perception, passive insight might uh, glean? I think so. Yeah, it's fairly right. honest. Do you want to set a DC? Most passive insights are probably between 12 and 15 at this point. 12. Ah, yes. That's all. Um, that is described. 12. <laughs> it's not very good. Mine's <laughs> 15, so I noticed. Yes, too. <laughs> yours is crazy, right? Yeah. You're really high inside. I think mine's just 15, too. Oh, okay. What's yours? Uh, it's 18. You're pretty with your Darren. Expertise. Rogue expertise. Um, right, as you all. Come in. Isaac, you're last in the door. Uh, do you shut it thoroughly? Yes. As you look around, you see the other questers and Zarafem in here. Um, does Isaac have butterflies in his stomach that maybe the gig is finally up and uh, they're about to take you? <laughs> um, no. That hasn't crossed his mind. As you walk inside, but I assume not. you left the eye somewhere? I don't think I... Oh no, they brought it back to me in those research notes. Oh, and the little mechanical engine that could turn it on if you applied electricity to it. Yeah. Uh, I think I left it in my bedroom. And you know where you hit it? Where I hit it? Did we um, just stick it under the bed or something? I, I think all of his belongings are in there, so he would have just stuck it like in his sack. Okay, so you like gave it to Prongor? Yeah. As soon as you left, beyond sight, Prongor immediately took it out of the room. Missing the Fantastic. All right, uh, you walk inside and sit down like a slip of night. June will look at Rafe and give him a nod to secure the room. Literally, Rafe is like, goes up to the wall and is like pressing his hand against it. And Shadow's head is going to jump out of the wall like five feet from him. Uh, the dragon has a sort of, should I be here? Look on her face as she looks around. <clears throat> Rolling. Actually, I'm okay with her being here. She's technically part of the group because she's connected to you closely. 
So June will shrug. Uh, she's going to look over towards you and then sort of like slowly, like cat-like, sort of creep into the room. Zara Fenn's going to like look offended that she did that directly before he put up any barricades. Let's say he would just look at you and... I guess that she shrugs. All right, there's a bunch of shrugging around the table as Shadow enters uh, and then is going to come up and sort of like lay her head on your shoulder. Zarafen will turn and, and nod at the defense of Zara. She will smile very slightly and then turn back to the group. I would have preferred to have done this on the boat, but considering we had guests, it's better that we keep this amongst ourselves. I have two things I would like to bring up. First and foremost, and probably the most important, is in regards to a quest. I discovered while all the fires were going on in the city, I discovered what Pitt's fate was. And I believe once you hear it, you'll understand my reasoning. Uh, she will then speak. Her voice takes on a timbre that's deeper and kind of ringing. It's clearly a fate reading voice. <clears throat> he shall rack the land with devastation and plague. Mythias shall revile his name and curse the day of his birth. He shall speak only the truth, but his hands shall become black with death. He will break the mirror and shatter the crown. Huh. Sarafen's eyes sort of narrow at the table. Hero goes, oh shit. You think he's responsible for fate's breaking? I believe his fate is implying that, but... There is always a some measure of doubt. He's shattered the crown, but what is this mirror it's talking about? The mirror it speaks of is my own. The one we always see you use? No. The mirror in my office, in the godmother's headquarters. What's the significance of the mirror? It was a mirror I created a very long time ago that is linked to Yenjasi himself. But it was made from his scales. I would have liked to have revealed this sooner, but considering one thing after another keeps happening, I took this lull as a time to do so. Chills in the group just to see if anybody else says anything. You feel say <clears throat> something. Actually, in regards to Pitt, I had some information too. She's staring kind of woolenly at the table, which is unlike her, not making a whole lot of eye contact. When we fought him, I had a brief glimpse into his heart. He has an other, like Voldemort. Only I think the other is the one in control. I had theorized that he was possibly about. His original name was Piercy. I believe he was Aragorn. He was a student in the school of the Leviathan. No. That can't be right. Uh, he went to the Elena uh, school. Which one was that? Phoenix? It's the Phoenix, right? Is Phoenix Elena? I thought the Phoenix was Giren. Oh, hell. This is my own school network and I forgot. No, the Zaratan is Giren. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phoenix is Elena. Let me just double check that, but I think you're right. Then the Tempest is Selenox. Bridgewalk doesn't have one. Yes, that is accurate. She goes, he went to the Phoenix Academy. Uh, Isaac, you would know a decent amount about the four magic school, well, three magic schools now. Um, you would probably know nothing about the fourth one. <laughs> uh, named after the most powerful elementals in Mythia. Uh, the Phoenix is a school that focuses sort of on offensive magic, specializing in, like, evocation. 
Um, the Zaratan <coughs> is Garen's school. Uh, Phoenix is in Alirna. Uh, Zaratan's in Garen. Um, and it focuses on the capturation and defensive magics. And then uh, the Tempest is in Selmox. And it focuses on like illusions. Um, they're very prestigious, sort of. Uh, they have grants and, and scholarships and stuff, but like you, you generally, you know, wealthier students, uh, nobles and elites and stuff. But depending on where they are, certainly in Selenox, I'd say you know like. So we are talking about Pitt, right? Mm -hmm. And that was his name and where he went to school before he became what he is now. Yes, it was only recently that we discovered that. Well, quite recently, in fact, when I learned his fate. <coughs> Some of the teachers there began to harbor suspicions about him. He was a prodigy, but questionable. Eventually, they did do a fate reading, but it was not recorded. Then how did you figure out what his fate is? I have a lot of connections with fate reading, being a godmother. What did the school do after reading us fate? Remind me what they did. The teachers gathered up sort of a, a group to go and take him, uh, to capture him. Um, but by the time they got there, he was already gone. She goes, she does actually look at Roland, she goes, I believe his fate also speaks of his actions towards the royalty of the varying cities as well. Considering what he did here and what he did in Garen. <clears throat> and poor child to be born of a fate such as that. I agree. How yeah, old no was he when he started the school? It was prior to the second bit of his fate. His fate is in rhyme. So his other would have been their birth. If this is one of the issues this fate is that we don't know which parts of it apply to piercing, which parts of it are enlightened in this entity. If all of it belongs to the entity, then he may well be fully controlled most or all the time. Perhaps it was triggered by danger or a certain age or perhaps when he accepted it. I also believe that he is fully aware of our next destination. I was going for a word I couldn't remember what. Our next destination as well. I believe he realizes that we are going to the. It is not called the Dread Wastes. Oh my god. What is it called? The Doom Ridge. Thank Doom you. Ridge. I don't know why I call it that every single time. The and race. I'm the person who made up the darn name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. The Doom Ridge. I think that he became interested Be in you specifically. Because of our conversation below deck with Posix. I think he thinks you are a relic hunter. Or that you would know more about relics than others. Why would Pitt care whether or not I'm a relic hunter? What did he give you? He gave me a relic. Perhaps he's wanting me to figure out how to use it before he takes it back. It's a possibility. It's also possible that either Pitt or Piercy is merely a relic hunter themselves. Also true. 
Pitt has often showcased when he does come out unusual capabilities. Perhaps he is gaining those capabilities from relics that he is finding using Guardian technology not attached to him. You all see a twitch in June's eye when he says that. If that's the case, then what are we to do with this disc he gave me? Should I stop looking into it immediately? And even if I do, what do I need to just hold on to it forever and try and keep it from him? What did the Bridgewalk scientists say? Did you get back any notes? I did. And then Isaac will relay what they said because that was last session and I wouldn't be able to a, a small electrical charge, which could be provided by a small mechanical engine given to you by Bridgewalk. Uh, that would create an electrical charge and turn the eye on. Uh, the Bridgewalk scientists discovered that the eye has only, as far as they can tell, the capability to see energy, even up to faded energy. That seems to be its only capability. Jim's eyes narrow slightly at that, and she nods her head. Hero's gonna look over at Euphemia. Are you okay? She looks up from the table. Not now. And that's all she says. Um, you said you saw into Pitt's heart was the fact that there was another one you saw? remember how to paint. <laughs> Sorry. It's, when... it's so hard to remember. You saw that and then like I think you, you noticed that he was able to like shut you out, right? You noticed that yes, he was able to mask anything farther in failure check. So that's not unheard of. Like people just sort of instinctually mask themselves. Uh, okay. But you weren't able to figure out much more than that. And also Okay, thinking back, wasn't Piercy kind of able to stay the pit in Control's hand against the two of us? Like, didn't he sort of pull him back from killing us? That was what their conversation suggested. Right, right, okay. So she would convey, she says, I couldn't get much more from him than that. He had the power to shield me. I suppose that's not terribly surprising considering the individual. But I do think that other pit, or Piercy. Piercy, as I recall, I think he kept the pit in control from killing you and I. That's nice, huh? So they what have a relationship. They speak. It seems so. What does Roland look like? That's what I want to know. <laughs> what I look like. <laughs> so you look sort of thoughtfully upset. Mm -hmm. So is going to sort of stroll over in your direction and sort of place his hand reassuring you on your shoulder. You know, Shadow is going to like look over at his hand and sort of reach out her forked tongue and tickling lick it. And he, uh, Out of game, can I get a quick reminder of when this conflict with Pitt happened? It happened uh, when they dropped you the were in the alleyway. Dropped the building. Dropped when the they building. dropped the power the on you and Prongor, yeah. and my my drapery was up in flames. And okay. Roland and I got pulled into the oh, shadow realm. Shadow realm. Yeah. Okay. And That's coming back to me. Now. I wasn't there. And this conversation me. now is shortly after that. This conversation no. right now is taking place right after they said, hey, you guys are getting clothes. Oh, we haven't gotten the clothes yet. Correct. No, that's just, okay. It has been a week after that event. Okay. We should, the, the point is that we should debrief more often. I know, we really need to. <laughs> Why don't we hop back and forth a little bit, I guess. <laughs> okay. June will then uh, say... She sighs and says, While we were fighting Danblith and what was the dragon's name again, please? Falgrass. Falgrass? Talgrass. Talgrass, thank you. Whilst we were fighting Danblith and Talgrass, well, 
Danbos and I were fighting in the Shadow Realm. He was able to wrest some information from me that I would have preferred not get out. However, it did. Thus, I would prefer to tell you myself rather than it coming out any other way. You all are aware that I am a godmother. Yes? She looks at you like dirt, obviously. <laughs> what you are not aware of is that I am the godmother. Euphemia raises her eyes and stares right at you for the first time. I am the one who created the godmothers, and I am the one who runs them. Tarifan, like, has this, like, <laughs> like, look on his face. <clears throat> he sort of coughs in the deadening silence. That sucks. I can't say I'm surprised. She smiles slightly. At you, solely. She makes eye contact with every person at the table. Well, I do appreciate the honesty. Who's leaving them while you're away? There is a council. Be a leader? also sit on the council, but I have the majority vote. Not much of a council, is it? <laughs> no, it is, in fact, a council. To council you? Yes. We need a council. She kind of looks at him and raises an eyebrow. Everyone can use guidance at some point or other, myself included. I'm not omniscient. Is that why you have so much power, then? That you can bend reality to your will? No, that is not the reason. But you are unique, I assume. Not all godmothers can do what you do. That is correct. Hmm. Insight, may I? Um, sure, go for it. DC? 15. Come on, don't be shit. Not shit. She is looking down at the necklace you gave her. And you can see on her face she's debating about whether this was an intended like bribe to calm her down about the fact that you've been hiding that you're this chess master behind the scenes the whole time. She's not quite sure what to think yet. She is not going to push you in either direction. But she does just look around the table. Uh, if the room remains silent, Isaac will say, So is that what you called us in here for? Just to let us know that you are the godmother? No. The primary one was fit, Pitt's fate. But I did wish to let you all know that as well. well. I don't mean to change the subject or to pry, but are you going to let us know what the significance of that mirror is? It must be something special if Pitt's fate refers to it specifically. That's fair. The mirror is what allows me to transport myself and those I deem to do so as well, to bring with me, to the locations of each of the godmother's hubs. They call them the cogs. I see. There is one in every major city, except Erebo. And if you were to shatter the mirror, would it shatter all of them? No. In fact, Pitt seems to be broadcasting some sort of signal from beyond the veil. I'm assuming you keep this mirror somewhere safe. Yes, in the most fortified How location I have. How do you think he's going to shatter it? He was able to shatter the crown. Honestly, I believe it has something to do with Yandrasi himself. As I said, this mirror is made of a scale of Yandrasi. Perhaps, perhaps the mirror shattered merely as a consequence of the crown shattering. I didn't think of that. 
Additionally, fate can do, could do anything. If it is Pitt's fate to shatter the mirror, then the mirror will shatter. Well, let's walk down that road. The crown is already broken, and the mirror is shattered. Is it able to be repaired? And if not, what are the consequences of that? The godmothers lose their network. No, the network still works just fine. Simply, my personal mirror is out of commission. I see. It was linking them all. Now I've overwritten the system itself. It is again secure. That being said, we will now be able to access it again. Unfortunately, uh, due to circumstances that happened last week, I am currently unable to access the mirrors from Bridgewalk, so we will have to sail the traditional route. At least until we get to another city. In which case, then, we can use the mirrors through the cogs to get back to wherever we wish to go. However, obviously they couldn't bring your ship. Right. So, you're saying the next step is... Doombridge. You're saying the next step is... The Doombridge. Right? The time frame for posits to harm walks. She'll clearly look like that's never happening. But it is drawing near. So yes, that would be most appreciated. I just thought of something, Zarafan says. Uh, is it possible that the timing of Pitt's attack could have to do with the behavioral change in the other, that perhaps all of the others are affected in some way. What do you mean, all of the others? The bound, she asks. That's what he's referring to. I just couldn't help but notice the rather gallivant way with which the... Gallivant. You went into combat on the ship. It's, it's almost like he's, it's splitting personality. The serious one still seems to somewhat be there too, but is overridden by a boisterous one. Are you saying you have a third other? Yeah. But you didn't mention it. I mean, the way it's behaving now is new. It's almost like a different entity altogether. Out of game question. Didn't he have a name now? He does. Yep. That we don't does know about. I'm just asking. Uh, Dalnor. Dalnor. Oh. Thank you. I was just curious. Sarah, Sarah I couldn't remember. I might, I might have repressed that one. <laughs> <laughs> it is an anagram of your own name. Do That's you right. share it with the group? No. <laughs> No, oh, keep on repressing that one. Uh, if that is the case, then Dalnor is going to. <laughs> uh, he's sort of like, like, oh, this is my chance. Like, he did ask you previously and reminds you oh, with the yeah, memory to introduce right. him to the group. And you said, however, this battle goes, maybe. Although he did specifically say he wanted to introduce him to June first to get the go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, that was right. He has a. <laughs> However, a, I don't. I, I'll forgive you if you go. There's sort of like a like a kid buddy sort of like yeah, come on, man, <laughs> sort of like vibe to Downor that you are picking up from inside. He has. Um, God, it's so much better than what I've got stuck in my head. This is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's it's different in a lot of ways. He's almost always present when the other used to only take control during a battle. Elnor is going to say, hey, that's unfair. The other one was always present too. He just didn't care. <laughs> and... 
he's seeming to want more of the spotlight. He's going to kind of like, mm, bad wording. And actually be in, in control in uh, times like these. He's, he's, he's like, mm, nope, that's a bad description. He says, I just want to meet them. He wants to meet you guys. <laughs> you guys are gay in the sense that, like, Roland is, like, changing what he's thinking. <laughs> he, he's, he's being one of those translators that doesn't want to translate. <laughs> Hero is going to, like, look at you and goes... <laughs> is he, like, really excited? Yeah. <laughs> is he as good at fighting as the other one? Seems to be, but he also, it's it's different. When we fought recently, I was still in, I still had a hand on, on the reins of what was going on. And he had a hand on the reins at the same time. Which is very different than me losing all control of my bodily functions. Well, that sounds confusing. Yeah, it's very weird. Um, I definitely planned on having him talk to you first. But since we're talking about him right now, he's kind of freaking out. So, uh, I guess I'm just gonna let this rip. And he's just kind of in his head, he's like, go for it, man. You floor is yours. I challenge you, Roland Tarkan, to a duel. Remember, that's the initiation for how you do it. You have to... That's right. That's right. I hate that I'm going to have to say this out loud. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I challenge you, Roland Tarkan, to a duel. <laughs> I'm sorry, Roland, what was that? Beg pardon? Uh, so it. it doesn't work. You have to say you his say name, his not name. your name. Oh. Oh, that's right. I challenge you. <laughs> I challenge you. <laughs> Wait, does, does he have a last name or did I just say? Just Dalmor. Dalmor. I challenge you to the door. All of a sudden, uh, after Roland mumbles awkwardly, <laughs> um... <laughs> He is going to sort of sit up. Doesn't quite seem to know what to do with his hands for a moment. Aren't you the hands and use the legs or something? <laughs> we kind of like. Uh, no, in this case, he's going to. Well, if, if he'll, he'll, he'll take full control. He's got full control. He's got yeah. full control. But when we're fighting, it's kind of a. I'll take the left, you take the right. Oh. And then he's going to. I am down more. Zarfen is like. He sort of looks over at June, like, like, and then he sort of gets this excited look, like, new science. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. June is trying real hard to keep that expression off her own face and kind of failing. Isaac doesn't hide it, and he's just like, June, what are the chances that Dalnor disappears as soon as we fix him? What do I think? That is exactly what I expect to happen. Dalnor says to you. There is a demeanor change. He holds himself sort of like better posture than Roland does. Um, he's got sort of a straight back and he's sort of sitting like... Downward, does that scare you at all? I believe that's my purpose. To help us fix fate and then be gone. Exactly. You're very brave. I don't think it's bravery. Fate always finds an answer. Even when it's breaking, it seems. She's glancing at Zarathon when she says that. 
I can still feel Roland. He doesn't really like this. Hero says, looking up at Dalinor. Roland, can you hear me? Hero says. Can you talk? You could try. He says towards Dalinor's, like, kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> Dalnor says that to himself? To himself? No, that's heroes. Oh, okay. That's Dalnor. Dalnor. He's gonna, like, knock on his kneecap armor. Like, you're not even trying. Can he? I guess he'll try. What do you say? I think he's actually trying to help. He's actually trying to help. Hero says. So Hero can hear me? I think I can hear him. <laughs> That's wild. Can you hear Dalnor when Roland is controlling his body? No. I see. Fascinating. I'd I love it... to introduce you to the Stone Knight. Not so much. What's the, the. You changed his name. The Archon? Yeah, that's the one, sorry. She asked, I would love to introduce you to the Archon. Like the Archon? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't think I would like that. <laughs> she just blinks at him. He's fine. Zarafin says it with exasperation. He's quite intriguing and amusing at times. Wait, Isaac, maybe I can hear whatever's inside of you. Hero, I don't know if that's such a good idea. But You're probably right. But I won't stop you if you want to try. I'm having second thoughts now. I don't blame you. He goes, uh, Nice to meet you, Mr. Dalnor. Indeed. It is quite nice to meet you. Euphemia just looks up and says, Hey. And then looks back down, looking totally uninterested. The, the only thing I wanted to do is tell you all that I will try my absolute best in every circumstance that I'm allowed. He says, I, I'm not here to grab the spotlight. I'm, if I'm going to exist, I would like my existence to be as pleasant as possible for the time that I do. When did you first become aware? He says, when you all fought against the Frog King. June pauses and goes, hmm. well, I can't say I remember that particular event terribly well, <laughs> considering. <clears throat> Or he says, I surrender. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You have to do it too. Oh, I really wish I did a little Do I say that in my head then? And then all of a sudden, he slashes back. <laughs> What's with this duel bit? Uh, so let me try it out. Worked. I didn't take it out. It's how you. Ex I take it that's how you exchange control over your um, physical form? Yeah, it was his idea, something to do with the, the, the way we're bound, the way uh, if I challenge somebody to a duel, they have to accept it and whatnot, so he thought that would uh, work, and it did. Jimmy is looking at you with a very intrigued expression on her face, as though she really wants to dissect every single aspect of this, and she's trying really hard to restrain herself from doing so. He seems quite a bit more pleasant than whoever it is was, was in there before. Worlds more pleasant. This must be much nicer for you. Too bad he won't stick around if we succeed. 
she says. It's, it's just worrisome that he even has the ability to bleed over outside of combat to me. The idea that the other one would come back when this one's gone, and somehow this ability for him to bleed over into my normal life is uh, very disconcerting. Because as you met, this pleasant guy is uh, wouldn't be the worst one to be in control of me all the time. The other guy would absolutely be a nightmare. Are you afraid of becoming like Pip? 100%. Got a lot of sympathy for the shoes he's in. Honestly, so do I. June has been exchanging glances with Zara Fen. <laughs> and been looking at you the whole time. And then she goes, I think it would be wise, and I'm not saying this purely from a I study fate perspective, but to look into this connection more closely, because you're right. I would not want you to end up like Percy. No, I mean, I, 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 I plan on letting you guys know that this is going on, but I really wanted to run it by you first because I wasn't, wasn't sure how everybody else would take it either. It reminds me very much of the relationship the Archon has with his host. It is a voluntary exchange. The Archon offers the deal. Well, fate does. They find it through fate, but the host must accept. And it's still there, and you can't talk to them. Roland kind of talks in his head for a second to what? to Delmer, yeah, about sorry about the spotlight thing. I didn't mean it that way. I just meant having control of the vessel. This is all I know, he says, so it's not weird for me. No, he was just kind of like trying to like say like no hard feelings on that. I wasn't trying to make it seem like you're the bad guy. I don't think you are. He's sort of going to look backwards down whatever hole the other other went. Then he looks back towards you and nods. Well, this has been fun share time. Anybody else have anything? Actually, yeah, June was wondering that as well. She just looks between the group. Euphemia just says, isn't it strange that we're fighting to get fate back and yet in some cases, fate breaking is Beneficial. I wouldn't say any of what we have currently discussed has been gone through the rigors of testing. No, I just mean that fate can be a bitch and fate is cruel and impersonal. It can be horrible, it can be good. I agree. There are times that I wish that fate could be done away with. However, the way our world works, it's impossible to exist without it. Yes, I know. She looks very regretful when she says it. Euphemia looks regretful to acknowledge that reality. I have spent my entire life working to get fate to not fall into the path of evil. That is the purpose of the Godmothers. That is why I created them. It was to help those like Piercy to see if we can avoid things like that. Fate can be interpreted. Fate can be 
altered at times. It can be changed in tiny ways to try to get a more beneficial outcome, to try to do more good. But it's not easy. So are you saying if he could have been intercepted when he was younger, this could have been avoided? Unfortunately, not always. Sometimes the only thing you can do when a fate is like that is try to minimize the damage. And it looks like it kills her to say it like that, but there's nothing else that she can change it. And with that, I think we will go ahead and come to a close on the session, Noble Heroes. Thank you for coming to join us very much. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like and subscribe. And remember, do transmit.